and uh, let us know if, if you're experiencing any problems. Now I see we have Nakonsi Tamarat back online. Hello, Ajahn Anarut, can you wave your hand? And uh, I believe it's uh, Angela, are you there in uh, Hanoi? I am here. Okay, are you in the picture or not? No, I'm not. Can you okay. see my hand? There's my hand. <laughs> Okay, now I'm in the picture. Hi, Very George. Good. Hi, everybody. Okay, now who's who's heading up the operation there in Ho Chi Minh City? Me. Okay, hey. hello, me. Um, yeah. so I'd like to bring you to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got to be in public affairs officer here in Ho Chi Minh City. Okay. Um, Dr. Steve is going to be our moderator for today. Okay, uh, glad to see you. It's It's Tonya, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. So uh, we'll proceed. I want to briefly uh, introduce, um, as we as he's called here in uh, Thailand, Ajahn uh, Ani, uh, Ani Ruth, no, uh, Ajahn William, or Kun William. Uh, last year he was serving in Mongolia as a Peace Corps volunteer, but doing teacher training in uh, several institutions. So also involved in English language teaching in Mongolia. And uh, he's very hardworking. He takes a lot of initiative. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy his presentation uh, today. And uh, he's asked to have uh, Ajahn Sontida, who is uh, uh, a past president of Thai TESOL. She's sitting to my right here today. And uh, she's involved in a program called IRON. So William is going to introduce her further, and she'll talk a bit about uh, IRON. So without further ado, uh, let's continue. William. Thank you. Thank you, Kung George. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak with you all today. Um, I hope you're in the right room. Um, my directive was to give you a presentation, a practical presentation, about task-based learning. Um, so welcome, Hanoi, Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh, Nakanti Tamarat. Um, thank you. I'd like to start with a, I hope, fun activity um, and ask you, how do you say this? <laughs> I say, what's going on? What's shaking? What's happening? Uh, what's up? What's new? <laughs> uh, this presentation is littered with American English uh, colloquialisms and a couple purposeful uh, grammar mistakes. So please bear with me. Um, today, what I would like to show you is a simplified version the presentation outline you have in front of you um, on task-based learning. And the six activities that I have outlined start with listing at the bottom um, and moving up the pyramid to ordering and sorting, uh, comparing, uh, problem solving, sharing, and finally creating. Uh, so, Let's get started. Um, what I'd like to do first is, is get some small groups. Um, but there are a couple rules with these small groups. Um, first rule is that I'd like you all to meet somebody new. I think these training opportunities are good, good opportunities to meet somebody new. Uh, I also think it's a great networking opportunity for all of us. And in the group, I'd like to have only one foreigner per group so we can have a good cultural exchange. Uh, and finally, let's, let's keep the group small, around four people per group. So you've got about three minutes. Please complete your first task. Well, I know you three. I mean, I'm a foreigner, so I can be targeted by everybody. Yes. Form a group, please. 
Okay. All right. I hope I hope you have some lists. Um, would a group in Hanoi like to share with us items they have in their fridge? Hello. Hello, Hanoi. Would a group there like to share with us a list of things they have in their fridge? <laughs> okay. Uh, Bangkok. Bangkok. Can I hear your list of things you would take with you to the outer space? Very good, thank you. And anyone in Hanoi like to share what they have in their refrigerator? Anybody have fish sauce? We have milk, butter, meat, jam, oranges, different kinds of food, vegetable, frozen food, fish and corn, and we have chocolate, we have dry food, we have eggs, we have chili sauce. <laughs> 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 Um, now I'd like to follow up on this listing pass and ask you all to rank the items in the, in the order of importance. So, what is the most important thing you would take, you would ask Karabu, I'm not going to say uh, and Ho Chi Minh City, what is the most important thing in your wallet or purse? Uh, likewise, in Bangkok, what is the most important thing you would take? No. Got about a minute. What is the most important thing you would ask Karabu? One girl. Hello, we live uh, in a car. Which chain did you like to ask And? Yes. Hi. Do you choose the name Karabu? Why do you choose the name Carabao? Uh, ah. And what the second one is what do you mean by the side? By this hand side, hand side. What does it mean? Ah. Okay, and the third one, what is your favorite song? Okay. Very good, thank you, thank you. And anyone in Ho Chi Minh City, what's the most important thing, or most important three things in your wallet or purse? You? Maybe yeah. first? Thanks. Of course. Of course. Okay, in our personal wallet, we have a credit card, we have ID, I mean, uh, ID card, driving license, and we also have keys 
to uh, open or to lock the door. Uh, one more, the cell, the cell phone, and the message for female, for example. Yes, yes. That's all. Very yeah, good. Money's not on your list, I see. <laughs> yeah, we're teachers. I understand. Um, well, as you can see, listening is a very easy, easy based task. In my opinion, it doesn't require a high degree of, of difficulty. Um, but I think ordering and sorting does involve a little more difficulty. And I've outlined four different types of ordering and sorting tasks um, sequencing. As teachers, I think we've seen in our textbooks where students have parts of a story and they must put these parts of the story in the correct order. Um, next we have ranking. Perhaps you've asked your students to rank the most important things they take with them to outer space or the most important things uh, they would ask at about. Um, next we have categorizing. Perhaps you've asked your students in classes to agree or disagree with statements. Um, and finally, we have classifying. For example, what are five different ways to classify food? Salty, spicy, uh, sour, sweet, bland, uh, different types. So, let's start with sequencing. Uh, here is a list of 12 countries. Your task is to put the countries in order from largest to smallest based on their geographic <laughs> So, for example, Canada is the largest country on this list and go down from 1 to 12. You have a couple minutes.
Okay. Um, let's hear what you got. Anybody in Hanoi have the answer? <laughs> Use mother tongue if necessary to survive. <laughs> What you get? What you get? Or Ho Chi Minh City? Would like one group like to present their results? Report. Okay, Ho Chi Minh City. Who us? Uh, we have Russia number one, Canada number two, America, Mongolia, Mexico, Tajikistan, <laughs> Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Belize, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. Interesting. Interesting. Any group get this? Not right. Right. <laughs> Anybody get this? Wow. Oh. By the way, who did I forget on number eight? Let's <laughs> find Russia is bigger than Canada. Canada is definitely. <laughs> Who did I forget? Number eight? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, moving along, your next task, the ranking task. Um, this is uh, my fake world here. Um, and you have 12 items with prices. And you and your group have 10 bucks. $10. What would you buy? One dollar scanner. Wow. <laughs> I like this country. Well, you need the computer because you can't use anything else. If you don't have a computer. You don't need a scanner. <laughs> Yes, ten bucks is ten dollars. So what does everybody think the number one thing they would buy would be? A watch? One dollar watch? Hong Kong making. But if you have a phone or an MP3 player, may have a stock on it. I think computer because yeah. all of those things. Yeah. If you don't have a And you've got about another minute. Sure, why not? So computer and scanner, that brings you up to five. You have five mm -hmm. more dollars left. Finished? Yeah? All right. Let's, let's hear from a group in Bangkok. What did you buy and why did you buy it? Why did you buy it? Because we have a computer and we can connect by phone. Watch, we can look at And the camera, we can send the picture. And we don't need. <laughs> Very good, thank you. How about uh, Ho Chi Minh City? Would one group please report to us about what they bought and, and why? I think somebody on this yeah. side of the table has yeah. to do it. Other side of the table, please. Yeah. 
I think he's, you could do it either. You could rank percentage of votes, or you could rank percentage, or you could rank a number. I think percentage is more valuable because votes is very much dependent on population. We're spanning well over a century, you know, or almost a century. So the American population changed a lot, plus the percentage of voters at any one time. I think the percentage of popular vote is more important. Percentage of their vote. Yeah.
So I did it. No, I didn't mention the year. How many percentage? Percentage here and number of votes here. Yeah. So yeah, you could rank them by the year. Males and females. 
So we could put five males on one side and five females on the other side. You've got about a minute and a half. Um, your task is to classify these photos. How would you classify these people in a different, different way? Athlete, singer, and actors. Or some of them are actors and musicians, so it could be performers and actors. So performer performers for athletes. Performers and athletes. Performers and athletes. Classified as performers, musicians, actors, or people who do both acting and music. Like Madonna and Eminem and Will Smith. Chi Minh City, please tell us, how did you do it? Uh, we broke them into athletes and performers, but then we broke performers into three subgroups of actors, musicians, and people who are both actors and musicians. Wow. <laughs> wow, you, you're good at classifying. Um, well, this is how I did it. Um, much, much more simplified version. Uh, sports music and uh, movies, flicks, is my American flag. Um, and by the way, who did I forget? Will Smith. Forget? Will Smith. Yeah, Will Smith. Uh, Will Smith. Yes, I didn't know whether to, to classify him as a uh, actor or a musician. Um, uh, we're moving, we're making our way up the pyramid. Uh, comparing tasks, uh, and the way I see it, there are there are really I've outlined three comparing tasks on my presentation outline, but uh, I see it as really only two. Uh, you've got matching and comparing and contrasting. Uh, with the matching tasks, perhaps you ask your students to listen to a description of people and match the description that they hear with photographs in a book. Uh, with comparing and contrasting, perhaps you've had your students look at two photographs and tell what is the same and what is different about, about each picture. Um, so, let's match. This is a subway system of, um, of my city, Washington, D.C. Uh, so, what, what I'll be doing is giving you directions uh, on how to get to a location. And your task is to match my directions or to find out where our destination is. Uh, please note that the dots with the circles around them indicate interchange systems. 
uh, places where you could change subway lines. So let's start at National Airport. National Airport on the blue line. So we're starting at National Airport. Um, and here are your directions. I will read them twice. Take the blue line to the Pentagon. Then get on the yellow line towards Mount Vernon. At Levant Plaza, exit. Continue on the green line to Gallery Place, Chinatown. Chinatown. Then get on the red line towards Shady Grove and exit after four stops. Let's try that again. Start at National Airport. Take the blue line to the Pentagon. Then get on the yellow line towards Mount Vernon. Continue, I'm sorry, exit the yellow line at Lafont Plaza and continue on the green line to Gallery Place, Chinatown. Then take the red line towards Shady Grove and exit after four stops. Uh, okay. The second one from the top. I hope you all do not have better resolution than we have here. Where are we? Anybody know? <laughs> Anybody in Vietnam have better resolution than we have here? No. Oh. We were at DuPont Circle. Um, so the, the follow-up to this task is to, in your groups, um, give directions to people um, using this map. First direction is to get a better subway map. <laughs> yes, I agree. Get a better subway map. Let, let, let them learn. Thank you. We love you. Oh, that's okay. All right, next time I will print the subway map for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, moving along, comparing and contrasting. Um, right now, you should be able to see some facts about Thailand and some facts about Vietnam. Um, your task is to compare and contrast Thailand and Vietnam. What is the same about Thailand and Vietnam, as well as what is different? Three minutes. Wow, almost twice as many tons of rice and <laughs> amazing.
Excuse my slang. M I L stands for news. Sorry, because we have technical problem at Nakhonji Tamara. I will cannot pick up the, your instruction. Okay. Sorry. No problem, no problem. Um, let's move on to Hanoi. Um, what, are you, what did you see as some similarities and differences between Thailand and Vietnam? <laughs> Uh, we saw similarity in software piracy. <laughs> um, differences that the amount of rice consumed. We had uh, twice as much rice in Vietnam as Thailand. live in the main city, but in Vietnam only about 6%, so maybe Thailand's more urbanized? Okay, so Thailand's urban and Vietnam's more rural. Okay, what else? GDP. Okay, so more cars in Thailand than Vietnam. Is that correct? We also have more bicycles in Vietnam. Is that is that accurate? A motorbike. Maybe, yeah. There's a lot of motorbikes in Thailand, though. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
more my, my stuff. Ah, <laughs> very good. Thailand, um, we to buy an Xbox to Vietnam. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, we could add this list for for a long time, I'm sure. Um, but let's make our way up the up the pyramid. Um, we're about halfway finished now. Uh, and these next three tasks are absolutely my favorite. Um, and I also think they require a higher degree of, of language uh, proficiency. Um, so, PS, let's offer some solutions. Um, and I see, I see we're looking for about four different types of solutions. Uh, we're looking for solutions to logic problems. How do you cut a cake so that each person gets a slice, slice of the cake? Uh, we're looking at real life problems. I think as teachers we've all seen in our books uh, a Dear Abby or an advice column where you ask your students to, to offer a solution to somebody's problems. Um, finally, I'm sorry, we're looking also to complete pictures. We're seeing part of a picture and we're trying to find a solution to it. Um, and then finally, case studies where you're looking to provide a solution once you have uh, to quantitative and qualitative data that you have. So let's get to it. Logic problems. I've got two pictures up on the screen here. Um, the first one is nine dots, and the second one is a is a picture of um, it's a picture. Uh, if you've seen the picture on the right, please take a seat on the bench and let me quarterback this game. Um, the instructions for the picture on the right are to connect the dots with as few lines as possible without lifting your pen from the paper. So connect the dots but you cannot lift your pen from the paper. Got it? Go. Oh. <laughs> Are we supposed to have every dot connect to every other dot? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Your your task is to connect the nine dots um, with the fewest number of lines possible. The picture. Your task is to look at the photo and describe what you see to to other people in your group.
Do we need to attach the end of the line together? Yeah, all, all of them must be connected to each other. Does it have to be like this? Yes, it has yes. to look like this. Yeah. 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 So she said that uh, we, we have a triangle and square. They, they overlap. Yes. She said that he doesn't mention. <laughs> Yeah, so we understand. He didn't say it, but he didn't say that yeah, means we, we had the right to do it. Sure, why not? <laughs> understood. This is like the game, like when we were young. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In high school. Yeah. Oh, yeah, even younger. Sometimes I was punished because I lay in black room. Oh, when you were I was a kid back then. This class is for elementary school. That's very interesting for <laughs> adults too. She said that this is difficult for elementary students. It's difficult for them? Uh, I think that just for el elementary oh, uh, yeah. pu purple. Yeah. Uh, purple. Yeah. Okay, um, we're missing Hanoi, but we're moving on. Um, anybody connect their dots with four lines that look like this? Anybody connect the four dots with this with anything that looks like that? Um, and of course, as you've spoken about in your groups, this is both an old woman and a young woman in the photo, correct? The old woman's nose is right there. The young woman's ear is below the hair. And it's not connected. Yeah. So it's, it's strong. The, no, he, he said in four lines or less, I guess. Uh, these four lines are, are all connected and, and you could draw them without lifting your pen from the paper. Without lifting your pen. Moving along to real world problems. 
Um, I'm asking for your help here. Uh, like everyone else, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm, like everyone else attending this, I'm a, I'm a busy person. And uh, we've all only got 24 hours in our day. So on the left left hand side are responsibilities, things that I must do, I have to do. And the right side are things that I'd like to do if I have the time. I want to play three hours a day. Um, so in your groups, you have a couple minutes, please help me decide how I should plan my day. Maybe you quit your job. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> quit, quit, quit your job, maybe. That's the best idea. <laughs> what does he let? Planning for five hours. Quit your job. It's too much. Much lesson planning? Yeah. Lesson planning takes a long time now, it's true. Sit only for five hours. It's not enough. <laughs> Have a little more time for fun. I don't understand um, uh, about the network and serve the net. Network, I think what he means by network is when you go to make important social and business connections. So going to something like conferences, meeting people, networking with people. Yeah, not the same as like a computer network. Yeah. Network means working. Network means making social connections with important people. No, not exactly. Networking is usually coming out to meet people at conferences and things like that, making important social and business connections. So going to meetings or conferences or even dinner parties, coffee hours, where you can meet people and say, oh, here's my business card. Call me if you need this. Yeah, it's the same as meeting people. Maybe he doesn't need to network two hours a day. Great, another, another minute. Thai, because he lives in Thailand. Yeah, Thai language. Maybe Thai language and Thai people? Study Thai, like the language. language. Yeah. I uh, study Thai culture. <laughs> no, probably <laughs> language, yeah. Study language. The same as if you say study English. You know, the person who study language, not the culture. If, if you want to find more, more information about Thai, will you research or study? You can study about Thai culture. Yeah. Yeah, sure, but you wouldn't say study Thai. You would say I'm studying Thai culture, Thai history. Yeah. If you just say Thai, we imply that you mean yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah. Just like with English. Somebody says, I study English. You know they mean they study English language. Yeah. Great. 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 Um, Anuru in Nakamsi Damara, could you please, Kun Anuru, Achan Anuru, could you please ask a group to present um, what I should leave out of my day? Ajahn Anuru, then Nakanti Damarat, hello. Fonika. Hello, William. Hello, can we get a group there to present um, what should I leave out of my day? Nakan, you can say. Okay. You can take something like that, okay? You take the time out and you have to ask. Okay. Just the same. Yeah, you can say.
Okay, I invite your turn to say. Okay, let them sit. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I think uh, on the on the column of F2, you can take something out that uh, you don't really need to do. Then uh, on the column of 1, 2, then you can bring something in. Then uh, you can uh, mix the hours. If you take out two hours, then uh, you bring in two hours. Thank you. Uh, can I meet with you in private to get a consultation? <laughs> that was very complicated. Um, very good. This is a follow-up activity, and, and the, that's the real-life task. And the, the follow-up to that is explaining your reasons of why you think that's an important, or why you think that's a good solution, and and uh, how that would work. Um, this next task is is quite fun. Um, I hope it's funny too. Uh, by a show of hands in Bangkok, how many people have heard of the cartoon or the publication, The New Yorker? The New Yorker. Every week, The New Yorker uh, publication has what they call a cartoon contest, where they provide their readers with a cartoon and ask their readers to write a caption to their cartoons, to write something funny that you would put under the cartoon. So. In this incomplete pictures task, your task is to write something funny about little Timmy in front of the classroom uh, presenting a book report to his classmates. You've got uh, a couple minutes. Anybody coming up with some funny joke for the comic? Yes. Okay, what is it? No comment. <laughs> no, no comment sounds pretty good. Maybe the picture and the right? Yeah. The person in the in the middle of the picture, maybe the picture. Yeah, yeah. It's a classroom. That's a teacher and students. And there's he a have to uh, presenting his book report. Yeah. He's presenting his book report. Oh, he's doing a presentation. Book report. Book report. It seems that his presentation is interesting. So lots of students listen to it. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think it may be interesting or maybe not. When his presentation is too complex, maybe. maybe it's when it may be complex presentation. Uh, yeah. They keep on the, well, they're very you young children, yeah. so probably it's not too complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe. Yeah, the second, the second uh, yeah. toy. Yeah, yeah. Part of the first toy is uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it might be interesting. Because the children's language is simple. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, interesting. The teacher would get the students in a lot of trouble if they're not listening to the presentation. Yeah, very rude if somebody's making a presentation and the students aren't paying attention, then the teacher will scold them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, um, we're back. I know he's not with us, but we're back. Um, anybody in, in Ho Chi Minh City get a, uh, get a funny <laughs> comment for us? Funny caption. Really? I, I didn't say something. Funny caption. Yes. Say something. Um, <laughs> say something. <laughs> maybe uh, it was it, it the maybe the little boy at the front of the class is saying uh, it was called the never ending story so I didn't even bother beginning to read it <laughs> uh, close very close uh, I thought it was pretty good for a book I thought it was uh, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> okay um, yes, they tell you never to tell jokes in a presentation. Um, moving on to case studies task. Um, three months ago I was, you may be asking yourself, 35 slides into this presentation, why am I, uh, why am I presenting you task-based learning? Uh, why am I going to be using more technology in this, in this presentation? And why am I using real-life uh, scenarios? Um, Three months ago, I was, I was hiking around in Nepal, and I was preparing today, and I asked Kunina here in the Public Affairs Department, what, what topics are most important to you? And she conducted a research uh, project for me, uh, and asked 19 participants here in Bangkok uh, and in Thailand what was most important to them. Uh, and the results I got were task-based learning, uh, using technology in the classroom, and using real-life uh, situations and scenarios. So, moving on to sharing. Um, we're almost at the top of the pyramid. I think telling stories are some of the most important and powerful things we can do in the, in the classroom. Um, I believe that empathy and, and, and empathy through stories is how is an important aspect of leadership. Um, so all of these Next task, I hope you'll be sharing and, and learning more about the people in your group. Uh, and I hope you'll be doing it in, in English as well. So, task number one, anecdotes. Um, please share in your group about a scar on, the body, on your body that you have. Uh, a scar. <laughs> yes, I've got many scars on my body. Uh, I've got one big scar right here. On my face. Uh, <laughs> the red scar. So, yeah. please share in your group about a scar you have on your body. I see a little red bump. bump. Yeah, that's not a scar. Yeah. No. Okay, tell us about the scar on your head. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, my father and I played with um, each other, and we used plastic bags. We uh, and we burned burned the bags and the bags for oh, to the the burning plastic. Yeah. Oh, burning how plastic. <laughs> very sore. This is my scar. Oh yeah, on your chin. What yes. is that from a fall? When I, I was five. I uh, I was hot from drop from the the high uh, the, the wall on the, on the ground and then accident. Oh, I was at a time from the ground. I had blood. So any cut on your face or head is very so much. If you put the hand here, the end. <laughs> I have a little scar here on my hand. I was such a naughty child. No, and when I it was I think I was five or six and my mom made my birthday cake the day before my birthday. And I asked her, can I have some today? No, your birthday is tomorrow. So when she was outside, I went and got a knife and tried to cut the cake the day before my birthday myself, but I cut my hand. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have a scar, and my mom always reminds me, you have that because you were such a naughty girl. Yeah. You tried to have your cake the day before your birthday. I'm very bad. <laughs> All right, who's got the funniest story? 
And who's got the most embarrassing story? Anybody in Bangkok have a very funny story or embarrassing story they want to share? Funny story, most embarrassing story. Embarrassing, for example, a day when I, I went to the restaurant, I ate lunch, and then when the waiter with me... Or anybody in Sorry, Ho Chi Minh City want to share their most embarrassing story? Oh, no. Absent minded. Oh, he had this oh, my uh, uh, brain. At the time, I had to give him my ID card oh, that and promise to come back. Yeah. Just two hours. Okay. <laughs> Yes. I have a big scar on my face. Funny story or embarrassing story from Ho Chi Minh? Speak louder. Speak louder. When I was about five years old, my brother and I played with a plastic and we burned the plastic bags. And the burning plastic fell onto my hand. I have a big scar on my hand now. <laughs> Oh, wow. How come on. Anybody in, in Nakang Sit Dam Rat have a funny story for us? Another story. Yes. Oh. Another story here. Another story. Okay, please continue. Yes. I have an uh, embarrassing story. I'm supposed to be by the For example, uh, okay. last year, last year uh, I went to the restaurant. I ate a lot, and then the waiter uh, gave me the bill. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot my purse at home. <laughs> at that time, it's very, it was very embarrassing. Uh, I think this is an uh, absent-minded woman I was at that time. Uh, I have to uh, give the, him the ID card and promise to come back only two hours later. <laughs> oh, very embarrassing story I had. I think that's an emotional story. Um, <laughs> good. Um, moving right, right along to personal reminiscences. Um, in your group now, your, your task is to, to think about a time when you, when you failed at leadership or when you succeeded in leadership and, and, and share that story with your group. When did you, when did you do very well in a leadership position. And conversely, was there a time when you didn't do so well? What's Got a couple <laughs> Family leadership. <laughs> we, why don't you tell us the story? <laughs> but that is not the leader. That's Maybe he can tell us the story. I'll start. I'll twice. start. I'll model the task. Um, as captain of my high school football team, I failed in the leadership position. Uh, my team started out with six victories and one loss, and we stopped working. We rested on our laurels, uh, and as a result, we lost our last three games. So our team ended up with a six wins and four losses for the entire season. Uh, when did I fail? When did I succeed in leadership? Um, as team leader for my uh, graduate school course and um, my capstone course in international relations, um, I motivated and, and led a group of 19 of my colleagues. And we, our task for the semester was to offer policy solutions to a mock president uh, who was at the time uh, National Security Advisor Sandy Berger. And we did a great job. It was, it was a lot of fun and it was motivating people. So I've modeled the task for you. Uh, please open up, express yourself, with uh, share about yourself with people in your group. Tom, how about you? Uh, I don't know. Can you share a story? Successful. <laughs> a successful leadership story. situation <laughs> when you have to handle something without a boss.
Dr. Kim, how about you? <laughs> I'm waiting for you guys. <laughs> I, I agree, it's a difficult task to do if you're, you're not familiar or not um, comfortable with some of the people you're around. Um, so let, let's move on to something a little more lighthearted. Um, what is your favorite movie? What's your favorite action movie? What's your favorite comedy movie? What's your favorite drama movie? Uh, is there another sharing task within your group? Comedy. All right. Comedy. Funny, funny things. I think uh, the film uh, Home Alone. Okay. So how, why do you like that movie? They are a couple. They know each other, and they found their enemies. Yeah. yeah. I film uh, uh, long by character. Yeah, the yeah, Italian. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome movie. They fight a lot. A lot of things uh, happen. Yeah. However, that's the story. So why? Aspect you do, do you yeah. So you yeah. think maybe um, there's a lot of uh, symbolic elements to that movie about conflict between the man and the woman. Yeah. Okay. One hand they, they can collaborate. One yeah. hand they can fight. They can fight. Each other. We have three but choices. How about comedy? Not a comedy movie they like. So in action, in violence. Have a comedy movie you like. And drama is something uh, theater. Play in the theater. So sad. But yeah, what's the fun? But it's yeah. your choice if you have to choose your favorite one. I like but comedy. Me too. But the question is which is your favorite movie in each category? So yeah. your favorite comedy movie. What is your favorite comedy movie? Yeah. Sure. Home Alone. Home Alone is a favorite. Okay, why Home Alone? Because uh, I see the, the, the boy is very intelligent. Naughty, but intelligent. Yeah. It helps me to relax. Okay. <laughs> when I watch my children. Okay. Mom and children laugh a lot. Okay. Fun <laughs> at your family? <laughs> I hope so. It means that my children are intelligent too. <laughs> and a very absent-minded mother who leaves the child behind. Absent -minded Forget mother. leaving your purse behind. You left the child behind. Yes. All right. Um, just a quick question. Quick little hold my hands, and I'll do this in Bangkok, guys. I can't see you. What you meant? Anybody else's favorite movie? Titanic, Spider-Man Spider 2, or Shrek? Anybody? The three top grossing movies. Um, and, and another thing you can follow up to with this is to ask people if they have obviously similar responses as you. Um, this next task is my my favorite. Um, uh, I will have to to thank um, one question from Malcolm Gladwell, one question to Kun Pre in Nakati Tabarat. Um, Anybody here in in, um, in Bangkok ever heard of Myers Briggs? Myers Briggs personality test. Um, one of the most famous personality tests uh, in the categories that you can read about. That are quite arbitrary. So I'd like to do a little personality test with you all here. Um, and there are five questions. Don't think about it too much. Just write down your first response. Right. So, question number one. Are you a nibbler? Do you do work no, no, in small amounts of time? Or gobbler? Do you do a lot of work at one time? So if you're a nibbler, you will write N. Or if you're a gobbler, you will write G. I think left brain is the creative side, and right brain is uh, the Question number two, and I see you're already ahead. Question number two, do you prefer the mountains or the ocean? So are you an M or an O? Don't think, just write. Uh, number three, are you outgoing, O, or shy, S? Number four, 
are you left brain? Are you logical, um, sequential? Or are you right brain? R, more creative, more emotional. And finally, the last question, are you an eater or a shopper? <laughs> you can only choose one. You can only choose one. E or S. <laughs> On all of these categories, you can only choose one. Got it? Okay. I'm N-O-O-R-E. Uh, your task is to stand up uh, and find somebody else that has the same uh, personality as you. Ask them a question about themselves. So, please, stand up. Meet a new friend. Find somebody like you. Yeah, that's not what this is about. It's the same thing. But it's true. If if you have, for example, people who have a stroke, you know what a stroke is? It's like a blood clot in your brain. You know what I mean? And so if your stroke is on the right side, it's your left yeah. side that's affected. Yeah. <laughs> like your right side. The left, you can move your left side, it's your right brain. Uh, yeah. It's uh, your peripheral like that. Like, like, so like my, fa my father had a stroke on the left side of his brain. Yeah. Yeah. Left yeah. side wow. is a little crack. That's called ambidextrous. But that's not what they're talking about here. It's not the same thing. Left, right, right, right. So what are your letters? What are your letters? What's your first one? Uh, nibble means you eat just a like a bird and yes. bobble is home. <laughs> I'm a bobble. <laughs> I wish I would I could say I was a nibbler. I wish, but it's not true. I am a bobbler. <laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah. It depends on the time. I, I can't answer. It's so difficult, but I think maybe it's more about it. I love the ocean also. How about you? Both, yeah, it's too hard to decide. Did you find somebody like you? Yeah, yeah. That's a problem for the city. Similar? Becca, did you find somebody like you? Did you find someone like you? Um, Anybody G O O R E M O R E? Let's move on. I think we're. Hello. I think we're at our destination. We're at the uh, apex of the the pyramid. Um, and these creating tasks are, are fun, and, and I think they hit the, the highest degree of task difficulty. Uh, and as I see it, we have four different types of creating tasks. Uh, clustering, uh, fact-finding, doing research to answer a question, uh, using media projects, and finally rehearsals, doing, doing real life, doing something. What is, uh, and ordering food in a restaurant or making a hotel reservation. Uh, so first, we have a brainstorm. I have a brainstorming task for you. Uh, unfortunately, we, we lost Hanoi. Uh, but thank God, this is your task. What is central Thai culture? Uh, Ho Chi Minh City. What is Southern Vietnamese culture. And finally, Nakam Si Damras, what is Southern Thai culture? Uh, I'd ask that you, you limit your 
you're clustering, you're brainstorming to the five, you rank your top five ideas in your top five categories for, for culture. Not in Vietnamese fashion. So you've got a, a couple minutes in your group. Um, uh, I, I think uh, Southern uh, Vietnamese culture is a uh, very so what is Southern Vietnamese culture? They're asking you to tell something that's unique in Southern Vietnam. For example, what makes somebody different in Southern Vietnam from North, Northern people yes. or Central not, people? Not very only, it's only mixed with China and Zanis. Yes, very mixed, yeah. And many people, many people I meet in Ho Chi Minh City are from all over Vietnam and they come to Ho Chi Minh City. Of course, maybe southern Vietnam, uh, like the city, city, more advanced for economy level. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing Hanoi is gone. <laughs> <laughs> culture, Hanoi has richer culture than Ho Chi Minh City yeah. for history. Yeah. 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 that uh, people say that maybe uh, southern Vietnam uh, has uh, open mind more. However, now we can learn about the open mind more practical. How about the fact that in southern Vietnam the climate is hotter? How does that affect the culture? Does it move more slowly? Are people more relaxed yes. here than in the north? Yes. We, we like air con, we like ice tea. Yes. We, we, like, we like people food. Yeah. So you think in Hanoi people are more relaxed than in the south? People are more busy. All of love you have. You don't want to be happy. 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 Yes. Yes. But in the town, I recognize that neighborhood are very friendly. Okay. Especially in Western Asia. Okay. I hope. I hope you all have some some interesting ideas. What I'd like to to show you is something I I created when I was asked to give a presentation on American culture. And I thought that these these five categories were, were most important when explaining American culture. Uh, the land, the people, family life, work life, and uh, of course fun. We all like to have fun. Um, moving on to the second creative uh, creative task uh, here is uh, fact finding. Uh, and I have here house life in Kosovo. One, one pro you know, I'd like to share with you one project I've done, which is connecting um, access micro scholarship students in southern Thailand with counterparts in Kosovo, in Africa, and uh, other places in Asia, hopefully India soon. Uh, so they've written into a pen pal program um, and met, and met uh, students just like themselves. Which, which brings me a, a, to a nice place to talk about what you can do, one practical application for, for meeting other people. Um, and I'd like to introduce the guest speaker we have here, uh, please. Uh, Ms. Santida, Ms. Santida.
I earn um, IEARN IEA stands for International Education and Resource Network. This is the uh, U.S.-based network started in, in, in the U.S. in around about 1980s. And at the moment, it, is, it has expanded to about 100 countries around the world, and it's the, a non-project, uh, a non-profit uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is for teachers and students to collaborate doing a project uh, using technology and the, uh, the, the technology we are focusing uh, on is the, the internet okay um, these <coughs> What happened? Stop. Okay. Next. Next, yes. Uh, what does... Oh. One more. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and this, uh, what does iEARN do? iEARN links up classrooms around the world for students to do projects together. Teachers uh, connect to each other and then get the students involved in a project. And um, it is a very good opportunity to promote cross-cultural understanding and it, it really motivates learning because uh, all of a sudden learning, become, uh, become, learning becomes more meaningful to them. And when they, the students and teachers are communicating across country, they, 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 they have a, there's a real purpose in communicating. Uh, I earn projects um, are established itself with, with different subjects. Uh, uh, there are I earn, sub, uh, I earn projects in science, for math, social science, arts, culture, and English. And uh, what we have been doing here in Thailand is mostly with English language. The I earn projects in Thailand that we uh, are engaged in are, for example, Christmas card project, teddy bear project, young scientist tsunami projects, law of life essay project, and my school, your school project. I'm going to give you a few uh, examples of the projects that have been running at the moment. Um, this is the Christmas card project. Uh, a group of countries link up together and teachers assign students to design a Christmas card uh, showing the meaning of Christmas in their culture. Uh, and, um, and for example, these are the Christmas cards that a school in the south of Thailand is working on. And you can see some Thai cultures in that. And students are writing some, some some phrases, some words on the Christmas cards, and these are uh, the, the students. And the the teachers send all these cards to the, the, the to the schools in the group, which means um, the, they will also receive the, the, the cards from 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 other countries as well. Okay, this is this is happening at the moment because it's close to Christmas time. Christmas time. The project has started. Uh, I guess last month. And the next project is called Teddy Bear Project. This is an, um, uh, an exchange of teddy bears. You see the, the teddy bear on the right hand side, on the left hand side is called Mali, and she is from Thailand. And the teddy bear on the right hand side is called Sea Bear, and sounds very uh, uh, like a male. So he is from USA. And the, the two schools, one school from Thailand and one school in the USA, exchanged these two bears. And uh, the sea bear is now with the students in Thailand. And the students take them to different places and write a diary and send messages across the country. So these are, for example, the I Earn project that has been going on uh, at the moment. And the, there are two components uh, in I Earn project. The first one is the, the, the communication bit. This communication is uh, for teachers and teachers to talk to each other, asking uh, 
uh, discussing about the project, when to start, how to go about doing it. And the students themselves are talking to each other, they are planning for the project uh, to come up with a product which normally is uh, published online. And uh, these, these are uh, very, very good projects because it helps students to really uh, uh, get involved in using English as a tool. So students are not, I mean, are not very boring with, with, the, with the English subject. So they don't learn grammar. They learn grammar for a purpose. They learn reading for a purpose. They learn writing for a purpose, not just writing, reading, and grammar on its own. So, um, and if you would like to join IEARN, you can do so. It's free of charge. Uh, you can go to this website, or World Wide Web, IEARN.org, and click Join IEARN, and then complete online registration form. Uh, in, in Vietnam, there, there is a coordinator of IEARN. And uh, you can go to this website, iron.org, and uh, uh, look for the country coordinator. And you can you can contact her, and then get uh, uh, if you want to, she can help you uh, finding schools and get involved in the project. This, oh, oh, Thailand, Island Thailand, uh, we have our own app website, which is um, arts.kmut.ac.th/iron. And that's, that's all. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjita. Uh, I owe you much. Um, and if you, as you've already seen 17 times in this, um, in this presentation, I am a, I'm following up. <laughs> I will follow up. Um, next, I'd like to talk about media project tasks. Uh, we just heard from, from some data about IRON. Uh, I'd like to hear from you and, and ask you some ideas about media project tasks and, and what what you've done in your classroom and, and use this as a, as a form to exchange ideas. So, uh, anybody like to start? Anybody like to start with some ideas for media projects? How about a publication? Whether it be a newsletter or something you could, um, a publication, a newsletter with teaching methodology ideas or ideas about culture. Any other, any other, any ideas in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Nakam Tita I have to we have a uh, newsletter magazine. Yes. Oh, fabulous. Is, do you see? Yes, of course. Beautiful. Ah, it's a uh, it's magazine. We have some uh, chapter about English language training, international degree like uh, TOEFL, IBT, uh, IL, SAT. And cool. we uh, encourage students and teacher express their experience, how they learn and uh, pass the international testing for English language. And also it's for sale, not for free. But we <laughs> want, we have more donators to help us uh, to give it free to school. Yes. Thank you. That's great. Anybody else? Ah, um, web boards, Dave's ESL Cafe, or Yahoo Groups. You're stealing my, you're stealing my thunder, Mindy. Uh, so web boards, um, Dave's ESL Cafe, for example, or Yahoo Groups, creating a Yahoo group with, with t-shirts. Uh, any other ideas? C-A-I. Okay. What is C-A-I? C 
C-A-I-N. You know what that is? Computer assistant. Oh, C-A-I. Computer assisted learning. I. I. C-A-I. Subscribe the e-book. Teacher, use C-A-I for teach all students. Uh, in your class by computer. Student can, uh, student can learn by this project, by CAI, and make an uh, examination from this project, from this program. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, CAI.com.org. <laughs> ah, computer based. I see, I see. Um, great, any other ideas? From Thailand, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Nakam Si Damra. Well, let me share with you one thing I've done, and, and um, I thank the, the participant in, in Bangkok. Uh, one thing I've done with, with one of my courses in, in Nakam Si Damra is to create a Yahoo group. Um, and to Um, and to use the Yahoo group as a forum to, to communicate with other students in the class, to post files, to uh, post websites that we will be using, uh, as well as a calendar of when, when classes will be, where they will be, um, how they will be. And I, I think the Yahoo group is a great way to to um, focus on student-centered learning. Uh, this Yahoo group is property of the students. I am simply uh, sitting in the background asking the students if they have added value lately. Uh, and perhaps unbeknownst to my students, I'm, I'm evaluating them based on the value they've, they've added to the, um, to the group. Let's, let's do a rehearsal task. Uh, in your group, uh, negotiate a pay raise, salary increase. Uh, but let's reverse the roles. If you're a director, uh, please be a please be a, uh, a teacher. Or if you're a teacher, why don't you role play a director's role? Or if you're a student, then you are director. Well, Dr. Hurtin, I think you should be uh, a teacher. That's true. <laughs> I can sit down by me, I? can sit down by me. Because it's about uh, asking for a salary increase. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> so, how would you negotiate a salary increase if you were I don't know. I've never at, I've never negotiated a pay increase. You're asking the wrong person. Yeah. But maybe if you wanted an increase, you could outline all the the things you've done for the company or something like that. The skills you've brought, the projects you've initiated how much that's brought to the center and how much you should get paid in compensation for that. <laughs> There's an agreement, so uh, you should leave or you should quit. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the term is uh, uh, negotiation now, young staff need to do it. Company. Young staff doesn't yeah, negotiate? No, no negotiation, they just quit. They just want to let They inform you of the salary they want. Yeah. You say no. They say goodbye. You, you have to. I think. To, to, to about that I think as a teacher now, we should uh, instruct students to the, have, to have the skill of negotiation oh, yeah. in the company. Uh, yes. Yes. At that time, they have to put on the table, manager table, some degree. At that time, they can negotiate. They try to. Uh, improve themselves mm -hmm. to have something <laughs> to negotiate. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, one follow-up on this is to, to obviously explain how you did it. Um, 
and I saw a lot of groups here in Bangkok. Uh, anybody like to share how they did it? Okay, me. Yeah, if yeah, I were the the lecture, yeah, <laughs> there are four factors. One, yeah, the teacher should have creative teaching projects. Yeah, lots of projects. Yeah. Second, the students' competition. Yeah, if uh, he or she uh, interested about the student, it means that they have to let them yeah compete. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, out of school, yeah, three, the results of the student's examination. If yeah, there are no, yeah, the student uh, not fail, it means that <laughs> the teacher yeah, teach very well. Yeah. And four, yeah, uh, the teacher should be yeah, diligent, yeah, no absent. Okay. Very good, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> we've been looking at this at this uh, at this paradigm for the past two hours now, um, or past hour and a half. Um, and I, I hope that I've provided you with something practical, something that you could take into the classroom tomorrow and plug into your lessons. Um, my secondary goal um, was to have fun. So I, I hope you I hope you've all had fun. Um, if you're interested in following up with me, if you'd like a copy of the presentation, uh, if you'd like to collaborate or, or create in the future, uh, please don't hesitate to, to give me a call or send me an email. Uh, and I will get back to you. So what else can I do for you? Um, this is question and answer time for for, for you in Nakamsi Gamarat and in Ho Chi Minh City and um, the people in Bangkok. What is your plan for the future? Plan. Uh, my, my plan for the future. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, good question. I, I hope to. Uh, <laughs> I hope to. I hope to uh, stay in southern Thailand and to um, to work with the Rajabat and the um, micro access scholarship students that I have been working with, um, and to create projects to um, and, and more importantly have fun. I'm not sure exactly if that's in answering your question. Uh, William, I have a question for you. I was just wondering if you ever encounter with your students any resistance to these kind of critical thinking, creative projects that students say, you know, I just want to learn English, just give me the English lessons so I can pass my TOEFL. I don't really want to do any of these activities. Do you ever encounter resistance like that? Um, sure, sure, and, and I, I think as, as an educator, our job is to to motivate our students to get them to want to do this. So, so part of that overcoming that resistance, overcoming those, is overcoming that resistance is to um, make it in within their in their interest uh, to give them a reason to to do these tasks and to become involved in, and to become an active participant in the classroom. Anyone from from Nakamsi Tamarat Kunanaru? Is there is there someone there who is a burning question for me? I'll see them tomorrow. I'm sure. Yes, William. Yeah, this is a very good activity you for give giving to the classroom, and uh, I would like you to give more uh, suggestions. Classroom activity, maybe. I think we lost. I think we lost. <laughs> I'm off the hook. Um, anybody here in Bangkok? Is there are there any are there any questions here in Bangkok? Uh, 
that uh, anybody have a burning desire that I can help them with? Ah, yes, miss. Good question. Um, you know, I, 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 I think nothing can substitute for hard work. Um, living in Bangkok, I think you have a lot of advantages of being in a city that is littered with English, literally, and with foreigners. Um, so I would, I would suggest that any opportunity you have to use your English skills. Uh, there's English movies on TV on UBC for your listening skills. You have 102.5 radio station to listen to English songs. You have foreigners every, every two blocks, it seems. Uh, and, and, and that's somewhere you can practice. For example, go up to a foreigner and say, excuse me, where is the Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> or where is the McDonald's? Um, some, this is one opportunity that, that I think you have. <laughs> ah, Kunaru, you're back. I'm sorry, sir. Please, um, please repeat. Okay, William, because uh, there are uh, some problems with technology in Nakhon Sitamarat for today. But today there are many people participate in the, our site. But uh, because of the, like I told you before, technology, because we cannot follow after your instruction sometimes. And uh, I would like you to sum up the benefit or advantages of the task based learning to bring from your activity to the classroom, apply it. How can the teacher can apply it to the classroom? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I appreciate the question. I, I think one of the greatest applications of task based learning is to use English in a communicative way um, and to get students to speak, to interact to share, um, and as well as involve students in real life tasks. Um, most of the tasks that you saw today, I hope, were relevant to your lives, customized to you, designed for you, um, and if you could plug in tomorrow to your classroom, I hope. Um, and, and I hope that all these tasks involved you communicating and speaking in English. That was, that was one of the real goals, was to, to share uh, with one another. Hope that helps, sir. He didn't answer your question. Yes. That's OK. Any, anybody else? Questions? Again? <laughs> Excellent. sitting down and, and with a grammar book and, and learning the rules and that's not always the most pleasant or enjoyable part of learning a language but it's certainly an important, important component of, of, of uh, mastering a second language. Great. Nakansi um, Tamarat, Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi. It's gone a, lot, a while ago. Um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of me and, and collaborate or create in the future, I would, I would certainly look forward to the opportunity. Uh, so again, thank you. Kapumaka. Thank you so much. Um, just before we sign off, I wanted to say that uh, Although Hanoi isn't here, I'll be, I'll be going or coming to Hanoi, depending on your perspective, um, in, in January. And so Hanoi has a task. They have a task-based uh, um, 
a, a, a task to do before then, and that's to figure out how to uh, solve their technical problems. I guess maybe you in Ho Chi Minh City can relay that to them. And uh, we are going to do uh, uh, additional video conferences, the next one coming up in January, January the 17th. Uh, I don't know who will be the, the uh, sites that we're connecting with in January, but it's going to be with uh, Professor Frederica Stoller from Northern Arizona University. She's done a lot of work on project-based instruction, similar to task-based instruction. Uh, she's written books on program administration, on teaching reading, et cetera. So we're looking forward to that. And then we hope to have two or three more um, video conferences in February and March. We'll be launching our new teacher training series called Shaping the Way We Teach English. So you will be getting information on how to get either uh, DVD copies or VHS copies of that series along with manuals and uh, readings. So everybody can do teacher training with this new program. It's a program that we've been working on for the last five years. The previous uh, teacher training series we had uh, called Language Teaching Methodology was done in 1989, so we really needed something new. And very interestingly, this new series was filmed uh, in four countries, Thailand, Egypt, Costa Rica, and the United States. So it's based on actual classrooms, secondary, a few primary, but mostly secondary classrooms in these countries, English classrooms. So thank you for joining in, and uh, I hope it's been helpful to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.